I am at uh, Bicycle Casino, you can see the sign. I'm going for the game down now. I am here for full eight weeks, almost two months. In a few days, it's gonna be full two months. I'm enjoying my time here on a bicycle parking lot. There's my RV. I spent here, like I said, eight weeks. And about September 1st, I'm off to Las Vegas. I have to tell you why. And in the words of great Paul Harvey, now the rest of the story. Page two. I miss his voice. Anyways, September 1st, I'll be in Las Vegas. September 9th, I'm leaving Las Vegas off to Europe. I have one way ticket. I don't know when I'm coming back. Maybe three weeks, three months, three years. You, it's your guess, same like mine. Uh, there's no poker there where I'm going. There was a casino, but uh, since COVID, there's no poker room and uh, didn't open yet. And I may do some traveling. So there's gonna be some videos. Also, a friend of mine, he may run the home game. So there's gonna be some poker stuff from, from Serbia. We'll see. In order to say goodbye to all of you, I decided to have a farewell game. It's going to be in Las Vegas, September 4th, Saturday, at Westgate Casino, 6 o'clock in the evening. I will be with my RV on the parking lot of Westgate. It is self-park parking lot, so it's not by the main sign, main entrance. It just kept locked down. I'll be there. And five o'clock, you are all welcome. Come join me for shots in the RV. Six o'clock, we are going to poker room. We're gonna have a game and just come to say goodbye. September 4th, Westgate, poker room, be there. Four and a half hours, four and a half of torture. My God, can't take it anymore. Oof. Okay, let me tell you. I am here at the bike brewery. I really like this place more and more. Food is good, price is decent, and they have large cold Stella on, on tap. So, like I said, four and a half hours of torture. I came in, sat down, younger crowd at the table. I said, okay, there's gonna be action. There's hand by hand, unlucky. And let me tell you, hour later, I'm down 200. Three hours later, I had add-on. I'm in a game for 400. I am down to, uh, I don't know, 80 dollars. I said, I'm not buying more. Hand by hand, make it 100, 150, and then after four hours comes new dealer, gives me three hands. I have my money back. I am up one, 110, and I'm out of there. Oh my God. I'll tell you a couple hands also. And it's about 11.30, almost midnight short menu after 11 o'clock so you know come before 11 because it's short menu almost nothing on it just tacos two types of burgers and pizza nothing else oh spaghetti and meatballs come on so i don't know i'm uh, thinking between margarita pizza and street tacos i think i'll go for tacos i don't want all that bread and the food came very fast Three tacos, red salsa, green salsa, and Stella. Enjoy.
Okay, done with the dinner. <coughs> it's about midnight, really fresh. I'm just in a t-shirt and it's getting chilly. What a difference between uh, this weather in LA and uh, Las Vegas. I mean, I like Vegas, but in August, July, whatever, 115, 20, not a fan. It's all right inside the casino, you know. They have uh, air condition, <laughs> but on the streets, nope. Well, let's review the session. So I started uh, with uh, $300 and immediately from the first hand, I couldn't get much. I had, uh, in the beginning, I lost like a couple of hands and immediately I was down like 40 bucks. <laughs> one I, I played 6-3 of diamonds, my, one of my favorites. Then uh, pocket jacks, but it didn't work because Flop was ace king and the guy bets. Then I had ace ten and on a flop king ten uh, I lost when on a river came ace and my opponent had uh, ace king. Then I had ace queen versus ace king lost again. So nothing you can do there really. Then I had uh, like add on hundred dollars. This was just like uh, hour and a half in the in the game then i had a6 versus a7 kicker played because board was ace three four queen eight so the kicker plays keep losing i was down 316 dollars out of my 400 got pocket aces flop the ace and the only thing I won was pre-flop uh, raise. Queen Jack of Clubs made me a flush and I won a f like 30, 40 bucks, not, nothing much there, nothing significant. But I kept winning. I had Ace King, won again. But but nothing big. It's just a plethora of plays and maybe twenty dollars on a flop. Came uh, another ace king with uh, two clubs on a flop. Club on a river, but no one had it, so I I won there a, a, a preflop plays from more like uh, twenty dollars. I think it was uh, four players. I got pocket kings. I raise. Uh, 15 pre-flop, got a couple callers, flop is 7-9 jack, I see what <laughs> what's coming. Woman on my left calls, turn is king. Okay, I have set of kings, but queen 10 just made the straight. Tell me, what did she call uh, 25 on the flop? What does she have that's good for pre-flop raise and for 25 on the flop? Ace jack, queen 10, so I check, she check. River is 8, jack 10 makes the straight. Possible hand for pre-flop raise and calling the flop with, with top pair. I check, she checks. I show she doesn't. So I win some, but not much. But at this moment, I'm down $20. I have $380. I'm down only $20. And I said I should leave. It's over four hours of play. Couple of hands down. I have Ace Jack. There was a straddle, a call, and I make it 21. The guy who, usually, who I remember a week ago came in a similar situation, sat down, didn't have a chips yet. He bought in 100 same thing like tonight. He bought in 100 and I doubled him up in a first hand. I was just thinking about that because he called 21 without having trips yet. Flop comes, uh, Jack 10, 7, two hearts. He bets 21. Like that's my pre-flop bet and now he bets. The guy next to him calls. I look at that and I tell him, 
This is the same situation like a week ago when you came in and I double you up in the first hand. What can I do? Let it be. I'm all in. He calls instantaneously. The other guy folds. Comes two small black cards. I show his jack. He shows five of hearts, nine of hearts. I'm up $120. I'm back from the hall. I don't want to play anymore. Goodbye. It's a Sunday morning. I just woke up. And uh, last night I was late working on this video. Couldn't finish it. So I'm thinking now I want to give you my, uh, my top five. But nothing comes to mind. Top five of what? Uh, top five. Okay. So in previous video, I gave you my top five TV shows and uh, I mentioned I, I like a lot, a lot. I like uh, American Ninja Warrior. So I'm going to give you my top five Ninja Warriors. Number one, 2019 winner, Drew Drescher, who for years, like 10 years, he's from the beginning in, in every, every season, you could see what's on his mind he has to get that the top of mount madoriyama and he did it every year he got better and better great guy i like him for his uh, commitment to the sport and desire to get that title the real life ninja number two joe moravsky the weatherman He's really doing weather on TV stations somewhere, East Coast, I don't know. Uh, nice guy, fast as bullet. Every time he needs the first place, he just goes through the course, obstacle by obstacle, without stopping. It's amazing, the speed. Number three, I have to say, my favorite, Jesse the Flex LeBrec. There's some girls, pioneers in this sport, but Jesse puts it on another level. When you see her there, focus. First, number one, she's great athlete, track and field athlete. Her focus on each obstacle, you can see that she knows exactly what she, what she wants to do. And she does it. Hits the buzzer, sets the records for women. Unbelievable. Jesse the Flex LeBrec. Like last year, she just got the married got the baby and immediately after having the baby she's back on a track no problem great girl number four i'm gonna say my favorite is jack murray he's a funny guy every time he comes on a course and has some goofy stuff he's entertaining and also fast he just goes he just doesn't stop he needs to get a little more serious and he was close like last year but he gets to get just a little bit more serious a little more focus and he's gonna be on the top and number five i have to say are all new kids this year 2021 season they got something new bunch of teenagers 15 16 17 year old kids that uh we're watching for 10 years, since, since they're three, four years old, they're watching Ninja Warrior show, they like it, they go to local gym, start practicing, and they are now in a final. You're gonna see them uh, in two weeks in Las Vegas final, bunch of teenagers beating the old, old vet, vets. I mean, people that are doing this show forever. Kids are setting records so easy. They're, I think they're even clueless. They have no clue how how hard that is and how easy they go, do it. I'm rooting for teenagers. That's my top five. Okay, we're moving in the kitchen. Time to make coffee. It's early morning. And just want to recap. Farewell game for Mr. Vegas. September 4th, Westgate Casino in Las Vegas. All of you that are coming for uh, Labor Day weekend, Come say goodbye. Westgate, Saturday, September 4th, 6 p.m. Shots in the RV at 5 p.m. So long.
See you in Vegas.